What are you going to do after? First Whatever question. Whatever we want. Yes. <laughs> Where's How many Craig? people know you're alive? Where's Craig from Krypton Site? Yeah, where's Craig? Where Craig? You? Krypton Site? Where is he? He wrote I about us for here. years on, on Small, but where is he? Craig? He's here. I'm giving you a shout out to Craig Wherever Krypton you are, Site. I can't see you. Hi, guys. There he is over there. Craig! What's up, buddy? Good to see you, man. Thanks for all your years of uh, writing about Smallville and supporting us. Appreciate it. He should be up here. <laughs> he knows everything. We'll, we'll let him lay in the, in the, in the floor here. <laughs> Spread eagle. Um, so when Alan Miles talked about the show, they said it was really a story of two families. We have a father and son and two cousins on stage here. And I want to know what that meant for you in terms of your performances in these roles and also off screen as you guys got to bond over the years. It was amazing. Fantastic. <laughs> Terrific. Incredible. Go ahead, John. In a nutshell. Well, I will say this, that um, the Luther family, especially Dad, uh, definitely came out of the gates really strong. And when John started playing Lionel, I remember the writers and the creators being like, oh, wait a second. Let's, let's pull this out even further. And you just nailed it out of the park. So we got to see a lot more of you, which was great. Yeah, yeah. Thanks. I was really intimidated by John Glover when I first worked with him. And the pilot, I thought you didn't like me. I didn't. <laughs> well, there you have it. I knew it. I knew it. But I've grown to love you, son. Yes. And welcome yeah, to the Luther family <laughs> reunion. <laughs> therapy session. Yes, it's a therapy session. Michael, do you have anxiety? <laughs> well, right now, <laughs> right now I have anxiety. Who gets anxiety? Raise your hand. Come on. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. What are we doing at a Comic Con? <laughs> Well, I appreciate that. I'm here to see you too. I love you. I love you all. It's great. Yeah, we're excited. Uh, but it was fantastic working with John. It gave another, uh, it gave another, uh, what do you call Dimension. it? Dimension. Dimension to Smallville. Depth. Was, depth. You had the Loving family, the Kent family, <laughs> and you had the Dark family, and you're like, you know, what would have happened if Mr. Kent was my father? Conflict? Conflict. <laughs> Things would have been different. I would have been good. If Clark didn't lie to me, I would have been good. <laughs> I wonder if you have anxiety. Yeah, well. Byron, what's your next question? Wait, John was going to say something. I, I was just saying that the, the two of them are like George and Gracie. You're too young, right? Yeah. George and Gracie. Night, Gracie. Yeah. Hey, George. Sir, I just want you to know that you have the cap on your lens. It looks. No, you don't. <laughs> if everybody could look at the sign language guy for just a second, I'm oh, going to show no. you something very no. fun. No, no, no. Uh, diarrhea. <laughs> diarrhea. <laughs> diarrhea. 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 Explosive. <laughs> diarrhea. Thank you. Thank you. I give it up for my man. I got a good sense of humor. So, from a craft perspective, we've all seen productions, whether they're independent to big budget things, where an actor just doesn't grab the character. It just, they don't link up. And what was so magical about all of you is you came to embody these roles really well. And from a process standpoint, I'd love to hear about some things that made that important. I'd like to start with Michael, because he has a great story about one time he, he tried to just wear some tennis shoes as Lex. <laughs> Yeah, I, you know, it's, it's amazing. I love you! I feel like Rocky. Remember Rocky's like, I love you, Stu! Adrian! Adrian! I just want to say one thing to my wife! Sorry. But, uh, you know, I was nervous about playing the role. I'm kind of a goofball, and when I got the role, they shaved my head immediately. I, I put on a suit. I never wear a suit. Look at me. Bruce Campbell was just making fun of my outfit. He's like, you don't dress up for your fans? But I remember wearing tennis shoes one time because I wanted to be comfortable on set and I could not play Lex. I just couldn't take it serious. I couldn't get into the character because I had tennis shoes on. So it was, a it was just a tough character to, to play to deliver those lines, to shave your head every day, but, and, and working with these guys, though, it made it a lot easier, and, you know, 
Oh, you sure made it look easy. Well, thanks, Tom. <laughs> yeah, you sort of became Lex around him. And then I used to get really mad at him because he was effing around on the set and stuff. But finally, I realized that he was doing that on purpose because that was what Lex did to Daddy. So I realized his genius. See? I was trying to annoy you. Yeah, and pretty, it worked. Pretty, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's but why you, it was real. Yeah, you were a great yeah. teacher, though. Do you remember the one time we're doing a scene in the season finale of season one or two, and there's like a tornado, and there's things flying around, and I'm getting really upset, and I start walking around the mansion, and I throw books off the shelf, and I, but I can't get my lines out, and I'm like, shit, shit. Sh sh there are children here. Shite, shite, shite. And he, he stopped me, I said, I need a few minutes, and he stopped me, and he came over and says, Michael, um, are you listening to what I'm saying? And I said, no, I'm not. And he goes, well, just, just try to listen. And I listened, and the next take was perfect. Because you had a good coach here. Sometimes you just forget the little things. So thank you, John Glover. And I don't remember. Well, I'll follow that real quick. Uh, Michael was a great teacher for me as well, including the whole cast. And we did a take, and Clark ran into Lex's uh, library, always just somehow bypass security. Came in, and I, I said all this stuff to Lex, probably about Lana and where she is. And I get right in his face, and I finish what I'm saying, and he goes, do that again. I'm like, what? And he goes, just do that again. That didn't sound good. Do it again. <laughs> so I kind of, so I said it all again, and like, cut, great, moving on. Because we worked together enough that he was just like, eh, you can do better than that. So, and you need that from a good working partner. And he would do that for me too. I think we did that, you know. It was, yeah, it was great. Laura? <laughs> <laughs> I was in uh, your first episode. I remember you, you were. on the... On you the, always on talk the, about on this on story. The bench. Yeah, anyway. And she was, oh, and, God. and Clark was trying to tell her how he did that. And, and she started doing that, and it would have changed it totally. She got it right away. It was very sensual. I would say sexual, but I know that they're children. I think you're referring to when I was on the table. I think that was for you, wasn't it? No, it was Tom. Oh, Tom. Yes. Don't you love Tom? Tom. I love Laura. Let's hear it for Laura. Laura. What? Did you just say I love your children? <laughs> what? Oh, you love Tom's children? Oh, oh, cool, cool. So, Laura, this next question is for you. You're coming onto a show that is very popular, but you also have, you know, it's a 20 plus episode season, so you're, you're literally jumping into a marathon. 22. What helped you find your rhythm on the show? And what is one thing looking back on, on that season of your introduction that you really are proud of? Uh, so Tom just said 22. Was it 22? 22. Uh, so I joined season seven. It was already a huge show. I was already a fan. I was terrified. I was I convinced I was going to get fired. Um, so I did everything. Wait, what? Michael was very nice to me uh, my first time there, but it was terrifying joining a, a cast that had been together for so long and I felt like the new kid in school and like who was gonna like me, who was gonna hang out with me, but everyone was lovely and it, it took me a while to kind of get into the flow of Kara Kent and um, I wanted to make the fans happy. It was the first time they were seeing that character on TV. She had only been in the movie in 1984, so it was, it was a lot of pressure like it was for everybody, but uh, yeah, it, it took me a while to relax into it. I didn't get fired, guys! Ah, uh, thanks, finally! I love you, too. Let, let's cue up a, a walk down guys. memory lane, the two photos that we sent in. These are is, is some, some great moments here from the show. What? Uh, our AV team, can we, can we cue up the side-by-side? Rosenbaum, do you remember taking this shot? 
I do remember taking that shot. That was really fun. We were comparing chests. Tom had a bigger chest than I did. But I worked very hard. Yes, you did. You still got a little bit of roll around the middle, though. I do. I got to I'm, I'm almost 50. It happens. I'm 77. <laughs> You look good for 77. Yeah, well, thank you, Michael. Yeah. I mean, you look damn good. I wish we could say the same about you, Michael. Oh, oh, smart ass. There's some really interesting challenges to your characters in general, but I want to highlight a few moments uh, when they really gave you guys an opportunity to stretch. John, starting with uh, that scene with your head shave we just saw. Talk about uh, going in there and, and, and getting uh, the locks cut off. Whose idea was that, by the way? That was my idea. Yeah, I went to My Miles was in Miles was the English one who went to the uh, he was hopped in the hair trailer. I say I knew you were going to put me in jail, and if you um, if film it, I'll, I'll, sh I'll shave my hair. I'm willing to shave my hair. And he, and he sort of jumped up and down, he hit the uh, ceiling of the trailer, he was jumping up and down so much. Uh, I think he liked the idea. I think he liked it, yeah. And I also suggested that you kill me at the end, really to push you over the edge. And then you pushed me over the edge. I pushed you over the edge. Yes. That was, a, that was a highlight. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it pushed you over the edge, didn't it? You did. Yeah. Put, pushed Lex over the edge. That was the turning point when he pushed you out the window. That yeah. was it. Yeah. That he was killed it. his father, friends. He killed his father. You killed my mother! And Ty wooed. No, did you really... Did he kill my mother or did he kill her? Or had her killed or something? You know, by the way, your grandparents were killed by John. You killed your parents, John, yeah, for, for rent money. But I, I got killed, so how could I have killed him if I'm already dead? When you were younger. <laughs> did I have a twin brother or something? When you were younger, you killed That's him. That's an easy way out. An easy way out. <laughs> you know, Laura started on, on a, uh, season seven. I, I think they, uh, they killed me on season seven. And you know how I found out? By a driver. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they, hey, you know, John! Looks like you're gonna die tonight! <laughs> <laughs> Woo! The producers didn't tell you in advance? No, 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 no. They found out that they do these drives where they go look at locations and everything, and they were talking about it in front of, you know, because the guy was driving, and they were talking about me being killed. And so the driver just comes and said, What do you feel about that, John? So I didn't know. He just left you out. All right, here it is, a big apartment building. I knew I was dead, but that made me work even harder. We 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 really did have such a great crew. Uh, our first, uh, our number one A camera operator, JD. He was so awesome. I did this scene with Kristen where Clark and Lana like break up, and it was like the second take, and they say cut, and we kind of okay, we regroup, and I look over, and the camera operator's like. <laughs> JD, you all right? He goes, you guys are breaking it up. <laughs> and I'm like, you don't read the scripts? Which is a stupid idea. Why was a camera up have to read the script? He goes, no, but I mean like, are you gonna get back together? <laughs> and I was like, I don't know. But he was, he had to like compose himself. He was such a beautiful man. He was, he was, I love JD. He's still alive, I mean, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. So Tom, you really got uh, a lot of praise, and deservedly so, when you portrayed Lionel in Transference. Can you talk about picking up those little ticks on the tape and what you wanted to bring to that episode? Well, it was fun because, you know, Clark doesn't, you know, do much. He kind of stands there a lot of the time. There's not a lot of mannerisms or things he does. You John don't is, need to do anything. And John is so fluid and he's so interesting and there's movements. And I, I kind of realized that if I could capture two or three things that he does, that when, I, when we switch bodies, I could establish those things right away so that the audience goes, oh, I recognize that. Plus, there's like such a confidence and elegance that he has. Um, I had to really dig deep for that. But um, it was my favorite episode because I got to like do so much, it was so interesting. And, and I, on the other hand, when he, because I started seeing these little things that I did that he was doing, and I thought, oh my God, he knows how to play me. <laughs> and, and, and Tom, because of just who he is and what he looks like and everything, didn't really have to do anything for everybody to look at him all the time. So I don't have that going. 
going for me, so I had no mannerisms. And I, I was very uncomfortable. I was very jealous of you, because you had me and I didn't know how to have you. I didn't mean it that way. There are children here today, it's too soon. It's too late. Michael, when you got dubbed by the, uh, the bride and left on the island, that had to be some, some difficult acting, because you're mostly alone. And, uh, the deserted island. Uh, you, you didn't come in for four years. That was. What happened? I was on an on island, island and. When were you uh, on the island? Oh, yeah. Season island? three or four. Season three. All sunburn. And I go crazy. That was. I was on an island fighting myself. Right. Yeah. And I just remember, you guys remember that. Yeah. I was just. I was going insane. It was. They just wanted me to go crazy, and I. I did that. Was that, that didn't you have well. a story about somebody breaking into your car around that time, like when oh, the character, yeah. like, yeah, that was that. a great time? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, somebody, oh, yeah. I, I had a van and I was uh, mm. across from my apartment building. I wake up to the alarm going off and I'm, it's season three, so I'm going crazy. My character's going crazy. It's just intense. And my alarm goes off at like 5.30 in the morning and I run out there with this, what do you call it, for like a... No, like the, you, you hang laundry on, like a, a clothes, hanger. clothes hanger, like a big wooden beam. And I went out there and this guy was in my effing van. He was br broke in my van. I was like, get out of my van! I'm gonna kill you! I'm swinging this thing and my buddy was with me because he, he was crashing there with his girlfriend. And he goes, dude, don't, don't hit him, man. Don't hit him. He broke into my van, man. And I'm just sitting there like, yeah, and the cops ended up coming, and they said, did you see him break into your van, sir? I go, no, but he was in my effing van. He obviously, but did you see him break into your van, sir? I go, no, yeah, I saw him, I saw him break into the, and then they arrested him. <laughs> There's so many great stories like that coming up tonight. I don't know if you guys have been monitoring your Instagram feeds with all the posts, but there's a special thing Tom and Mike do called Smallville Nights. It's available online. You can buy it here at multiple vendor locations throughout the building. I Tom highly recommend you do not bring your children. And if you do, yes. that's on you. That's on you. It's a lot of fun. I came once. They, they mean it. Don't, don't bring your children. <laughs> It's a little wrong. Find some somebody that's fine, you know, a cosplay guy or a stormtrooper to watch your kids. <laughs> I'm sure they're very reliable people. Um, but yeah, the kids, it's not a good. Unless they're really small, they don't understand. <laughs> Can we pop up the last photo? The legacy of Smallville is so wonderful and so meaningful to so many fans. We have an artist that has done a special Smallville. LACC print here. You've got the Fortress of Solitude, the, the Kent Farm, and the Daily Planet. There are going to be some at Legion M. There's going to be some over there at H52 at the booth. We're going to have the cast uh, get some of these as gifts. And if you haven't read the Hollywood Reporter's retrospective, all these folks and more, Annette, John Schneider, the creators, they all contributed. It's a beautiful read. It's a beautiful cast we have here, and they're so glad to spend their Saturday and Sunday with you. Thank you guys for coming out here. We're going to keep this good.